Hi guys, Rhonda Greenbury, certified aromatherapist, founder of Five Seconds to Healthy, creator of Oil Therapy by Rhonda, if you're on my Facebook online um, community. I'm also a doTERRA wellness advocate, and I'm coming on today as part of my educational series to teach you about bergamot. Um, so here's bergamot, essential oil. This is carried by doTERRA. As many of you know, I affiliate with doTERRA because I've done two and a half years of education and research and with um, my experiences and my education and research I have um, concluded that doTERRA is one of the best essential oil companies in the world so they are one of the only brands that I recommend um, I will rarely recommend a store-bought a storefront brand um, and if you want to learn more about that you need to sit in on one of my essential oil 101 classes because I get into the details of oil quality and why um, storefront oils are not therapeutic mm -hmm. or aren't very therapeutic to start. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna dig in to bergamot. Um, so bergamot is, it's actually like a citrus plant. So it is a cold pressed oil. That's how it's expressed and turned into an essential oil. This is a uh, photosensitive oil. So if you're using this oil, um, I don't recommend that you go out into sunlight for a minimum of 12 hours, but with bergamot, we like to use a lot of um, precautions because some people are really sensitive to the sun. So I would say even up to 72 hours, which is um, roughly like four days. That's a long time, right? Uh, three, three days maybe? Three or four days. Anyways, so what I'm gonna suggest to you is if you're using bergamot as part of a blend or something, you need to pick a part of your body that won't be exposed to the sun, especially when we're talking about summertime use, right? Um, the reason that it is photosensitive is because it contains a chemical constituent called furanocuramins. These occur naturally in essential oils, um, but not all of them, just some of them. So bergamot happens to be one of them. Um, now with that in mind, maybe you've heard that, I'm going to tell you a little story actually. So if you've ever used the um, Chanel 5 perfume, you'll know that a lot of um, perfumes in the world, they use um, chemical constituents, so they've synthesized the chemicals in them, so they used something that was similar to bergamot, and they put it, women who put it on their necklines here, they were getting dark spots, that would be the photosensitivity. So. Um, even perfume chemists and, chemists and per, people who um, operate professionally in the perfumery world need to be careful of photosensitive chemicals, okay? So let's get into the therapeutic uses of how we use it. Um, bergamot, I believe doTERRA's bergamot is sourced in somewhere in Italy. Um, yeah, I'm going to say somewhere in Italy. So um, if you want to know more details, and I, I do seriously challenge you, it is part of my online community and my education series and stuff, is I'm actually empowering you to have informed um, self-care. So please go on to doTERRA.com. There will be a video that talks about lemon, essential oil, and bergamot. Jump on there. You'll learn about how it's distilled, where it's distilled. Um, the relationship that they have with the farmers, part of it is the co-impact sourcing, so it's really important, um, it's very valuable information to know, and um, it will really help you grow in your informed self-care journey, okay? <clears throat> now, in um, doTERRA land, they suggest that you can diffuse this in a classroom or at home or at school, and you can use it for stress levels or tension, if tension is high. Um, you can apply it while showering and inhale deep to experience its calming aroma while enjoying its purifying skin benefits. Um, I, if you're going to do that as a certified aromatherapist, I recommend diluting it. Um, you can also use it on your feet before bedtime. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as a calming and relaxing massage with obviously diluted in another oil. Um, and you can also add one to two drops in uh, your own skincare cleanser, okay? <clears throat> so what do we use it for in aromatherapy then? Well, in aromatherapy, it's considered an antidepressant. 
It is used for digestive things. It is used for people who have excessive flatulence. It is calming and antiseptic. Um, so I, for depression, for example, I'm gonna give you a little recipe that I like to use for my depression blends. Um, my favorite depression blend, and this is um, primarily for people who have um, more like a like a bipolar or manic depressive disorders, then I like to go for bergamot and clary sage and vetiver. And I actually pair those and I do equal amounts of them. And I usually do dilutions about 5%. So if you're looking to make a depression roller bottle, go grab yourself a 10 mil roller bottle and you're gonna put five drops of bergamot, five drops of clary sage and five drops of vetiver. Okay, and then you're going to top that up with fractionated coconut oil. If you have problems with coconut, then I suggest uh, the jojoba oil, and that's actually spelled J-O-J-O-B-A. Sometimes I call it jojoba because I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, uh, but I recognize it when I read it. And um, that's a 5% blend. You can go up to 20 if you need to. Uh, to do it by 20, you would just increase each drops by 5 uh, up to four times, okay? Uh, additionally, you can use it for infections of the mouth and skin. You can use it for respiratory. It's good for sore throats and tonsillitis. You can use it with lemon for bronchitis. So it would probably smell amazing uh, diffused for that. It's good for fevers. <clears throat> you can use it for urinary cystitis. So I would just apply that topically to your lower lower pelvic area if you're going to be addressing uh, urinary things. Uh, it's good for intestinal problems. So like we said, flatulence, indigestion. Um, it can restore the appetite. And it's actually really good for skincare. So it's actually considered a skin balancer. So if you have um, really oily skin or really dry skin, if you add bergamot to your um, skincare blends, it can help balance things out. Now, with that in mind, just try to remember that it's a phototoxic essential oil. So um, when you're using it in those blends, you have to be aware of when you'll be out in the sun again and probably in the summertime for your facial care, it's not an idea, it's not a good idea to use it um, as a daily use, okay? Not on your face anyways. Uh, bergamot emotionally is known as the oil of self-acceptance. So it relieves feelings of despair, self-judgment, and low self-esteem. It supports um, the individual in need of self-acceptance and self-love. <clears throat> um, it will invite the individual to view life with optimism. It has a cleansing effect on stagnant feelings and limiting beliefs. Um, if you don't know what limiting beliefs are, I suggest you Google them as part of your self-care. It's important for you to understand what limiting beliefs are. But if you're here doing essential oils, uh, you're probably overcoming some limiting beliefs already. Um, it's wonderful for those who are feeling down and helpless. <clears throat> it awakens the soul and to hope and encourages you to share the inner self. Okay. Um, when we're looking at chakras, we would typically use bergamot for the sacral chakra. Okay. And the sacral chakra, if you're not sure where that is, like if you're a person who's actually using oils to address um, chakra work or do energy work, your chakra is situated between your pelvic bone and your navel. So it's like in between there. Okay and it is good for being comfortable in your skin. So a lot of that is, you know, confidence and, um, you know, being a higher, being part of your higher self, right? Uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. It is considered a top to middle note. So when you're using bergamot, um, it evaporates quick. As many of you may know, if you've watched any of my other citrus videos, um, citrus essential oils could technically even in an unopened bottle with the cap still on could a, a good oil will probably evaporate even in the bottle totally closed but not stored properly so maybe in the sun or something um within a year or two 
So it's best to use up an entire bottle before you replace it. I would not stock up on the citrus oils. They're not the best to stock up on. Um, unlike other oils, some oils will get better with age. Some oils are prone to oxidization, which means that they become toxic or dangerous, okay? So it's important that we do a lot of good care for it. Um, and lastly, a few tips <clears throat> to keep your oils clean. You can smell them if you want, but try not to let them touch people's noses. If people really want to smell essential oils, you should really be mm -hmm. dropping them on a piece of paper so that you can avoid them um, contaminating the orifice reducer at the top here, okay? And store them in a dark place. So if you have a box, store it in a dark place. If you want to go a step further, your citrus oils can be stored in the fridge safely, and then they'll last longer than that year or two, okay? All right, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. I hope you're enjoying this educational series and uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you and let me know if you use it in a blend or a skincare or something or a nice foot massage um, before bed. You'll probably sleep amazing, okay? Bye guys!